Good morning, good morning, everybody. We go to the chitas of today. And we go to the chumash of the day. Today is Friday, sixth reading. The portion of uh, told us, chapter 27, verse number 28. So here is the blessing that Isaac gives uh, his son, Yaakov. May the Lord give you the dew of the heavens. Mishmani Aretz and the fatness of the land. And an abundance of grain and wine. Rash says, May he give you and repeatedly give you. Going to the simple meaning, it refers back to the previous topic. Look, the fragrance of my son which has given him, is like the fragrance of the field. Further, may, may he give you the dew of the heaven. Mitala shamayim as its interpreter, according to the simple meaning. And there are midrashic interpretations of many kinds. Another explanation, what does it mean, Elikim? Why, why is the divine names, which signifies the God's attribute of justice used here, Teach us that he will treat you with justice. If you deserve it, he'll give it to you. Not, he will not give it to you. But to Asa, he said, the fat place of the earth shall be your dwelling place. Whether you're righteous or wicked, he'll give it to you. And from him, Isaac Solomon learned. When he built a temple, he arranged his prayers saying that in Israelites who have faith and justice and divine decree upon himself and not complain about you, Therefore, he will give to every Jew according to his way. For you know what's in his heart. Gentiles who lack faith. Therefore, Solomon said, you will, shall hear in the heavens and do according to all the stranger calls upon you. Whether he's deserving or not deserving, give it to him. So he shall not complain about you. This is found in the old interpretation of Rashi. Nations shall serve you. And kingdoms shall bow down to you. You shall be master over your brothers. And your mother's son shall bow to you. Those who curse you will be cursed. And those who bless you shall be blessed. Jacob said to Judah, your father's sons, because he, Jacob, had sons from many mothers. And here, since he, Isaac was married only to one wife, he said, your, mo your mother's son. Excluding Bilam, the scripture says, those who bless you shall be blessed, and those who curse you shall be cursed. The reason for this is that for the righteous, the beginning is suffering and the end is tranquility. That's why it starts over with curses and then blessings. And thus, those who curse them and cause them pain receive those who bless them. Isaac, therefore, mentions the curses of those who curse before he mentions the blessings of those who bless. As for the wicked, however, the beginnings are tranquility and their end is suffering. Bilam therefore mentions the blessing before the curse. When it came to pass, when Isaac finished blessing his son, Jacob had just left his father. And his brother, Esau, came with his hunt. This one, what Asher, this one was leaving. And this one was coming. First, the Rumi asked him at Tommy, he made this beautiful, he made this food. He brought it to his father, he said to my father, stand up, sit up. Eat from the game of your son. You'll bless me for yourself. He said, Well, I am a son firstborn. Yeah, it's a great shudder. 
He said, who then is the one who hunted the game and brought it to me? And I ate everything. Before you, while you had not yet come. And I blessed him. He too shall be blessed. Now she says, why did suddenly did he shudder? What was his bewilderment? What was suddenly? Going to the Medrash, he actually shuddered because he saw Gehenna opening up beneath him. When Yaakov Avina walked in, he felt Ganadin. When Asa walked in, he felt Gehenna. Hell. Me Eifa, Russian Atzma, it's an expression by itself, which has many usages. Me Eifa, who then? Another expression, Eifa is a combination of Aya, where, and play here. So the meaning of me, Eifa, who is he? And where is he who entered the game? But Acha Mikol, any flavor that I wish to taste, I tasted in it. Gam Barach here. That you should not say that Jacob had not deceived his father, he should not have to receive the blessings. Therefore, Jacob, Isaac says, Gam Barach here. And I blessed him intentionally. Even though that the Akiv Avinu took away the blessings from you, he should keep the blessings. Shmai when Esav heard the words of his father, Yitzhak Tzaka, good day, lo mara, cried out a great bitter cry. Advait. Vayemal Avi said to his father, Barcheni Gamania, said, Bless me also. Vayemal he told the Barchicha Bimirma, your brother came to the cunning Vayikar Bechre, said, Ach, he took your blessing. Mirma means with cleverness. He said, for this reason, his name was Yaakov. He held up twice. He took away his berchasi. He took away his berchasi laka. He took a berchasi. He took away my first birthright. In a galata laka is berchasi. Now he took away my blessing. A man, he said to him, said, I let Saltli Bracha have you not reserved a blessing for me? Now she says, he said, is this not the reason his name is Yaakov? It's because, of, because you are his kinsman. Was his name Yaakov because that he was the future, because he's destined to deceive me? Why does Isaac shudder? He said, perhaps I'm guilty of an iniquity, for I blessed the younger son before the older one, and thus ordered the order of relationship. Therefore, Asaph started to cry. He had already deceived me twice. His father said, what did he, did he do to you? He replied, he took my birthright. So Isaac said, that's why I was troubled and shuddered. For I was afraid perhaps I transgressed the line of strict justice. But actually now, I actually did the right thing. I thought I was doing against the normal, I was going against the normal situation of giving the firstborn it's the second son, a younger one before the other one. But now you're telling me that you sold your birthright. Now you're telling me you sold your birthright, so you don't deserve the bracha. He deserved it. I may need to explain according to the Targum. He lay in wait for me. At Salta, he reserved the expression of separation by Yotza. Separated. Blessed. Yeah, Yitzhak, 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 Setes, and Givir Satilach. Behold, I made him a master of you. It's called Achon Asati Leilavadim, and all and I gave him all, all his brothers as servants, Bedogim Besidash, and I gave him the corn and the wine. Lacha Ephraim Esbani. So for then, you then, what shall I do, my son? Rashi says, this is the seventh blessing given to Jacob, and he puts it first. But he said, what use will blessings be to you? If you acquire property, it will be his. I made him a master over you. Whatever the slave acquires, acquires the master. So what kind of blessing should I give you? What will I seek for something to do for you? 
Asa raises voice. Ayah in Yitzhak and Yitzhak said, "Okay." Aim elav hini mishman aritz yim mishavach. He said, "Behold the dwellings; they'll be the fat places of the earth." With talas shamayim mal and for the dew of the heavens from above. As she says, interesting what Ashi says, if one of the fat places of the earth, this is Italy belonging to Greece. That is Italy, ultimately Rome, situate itself in Italy. You will live by the sword. So and you shall serve your brother. And it'll be when you grieve that you'll break his yoke from your neck. Asher Zachayu by the sword sometimes Al takes the place of the letter Beis. Means you, uh, you stood by your sword Al Chavid. Same Bichay Bichah by your sword. Because Al means a ta upon your sword. It means Bichay Bichah in the sword with your sword. You're gonna live by the sword. An expression of pain. I will lament in my speech when the Israelites will transgress the Tater. And you will have cause to grieve about the blessings that he took. You will break his yoke. Which is blessing which his father gave him. Believe that Yesu said to his, his heart, You could be made able of me, let the days of the morning of my father draw near. But I go as Yaakov Achi and I'll kill my brother. Ash is the apparent meaning that I should not grieve. I should not grieve my father. He said, I'll wait till my father dies. There are various madrasic interpretations in what they mean. You could be made able of Verse 42, by Yugali Rivka's Divya Esav, and Yitzhak, and Rivka was told the words of Esav. And Noha Godel, her older son, Atishla, particularly Yaakov, and Akvat, she called Yaakov, her younger son, Matayim, Elav, Hine, Esav, Rafisa, Snachim, Lacholage. Your brother Esav regrets his relationship to you, and he wishes to kill you. That's it. Rebecca was told. How was she told? Baruch HaKedosh. She was told divine inspiration. She was, a, she was a prophet. So she had divine inspiration. She knew what Asa said without Asa saying it to her. It's not in the saying it said to his heart. It's not Allah. He regrets the brother, brotherly relationship. To consider other brotherly thoughts. To behave towards you as a stranger and to kill you. The Medrashav explains it. The expression of consolation. In his eyes, you are already dead. And he's drunk a cup of consolation, a cup of wine, possibly drunk in the house of a mourner over you. According to the simple meaning, it's an expression of consolation. By killing you, he'll console himself by losing the blessing. At the beginning, verse 43, and now my son Shema Bekele, listen to my voice. Flee to my brother Lovin. You'll dwell there for a few days. Until your brother's wrath will survive. Will survive. Verse 45. Until your brother's rage subsides from you. I'll forget what you have done to him. And I'll send and I'll take you from there. Why should I lose you both in one day? I'll be bereft from both of you. This teacher, one who buries his children, is called Shakal bereft. 
And so concerning Jacob, he says, I am shakauti, I am bereft. And he thought that Asa was dead. He said, shakauti, I lost my son, I'm bereft. I can't be, I can't be, I can't be consoled. No parent should bury their child. Because I know if he rises up against you and to kill you, his sons will rise up and kill you. The divine, but so therefore, the, not one person is going to die. There will be many people dying over here. And the divine spirit poured out of itself her, and she prophesied they would die the same day. So that's what ultimately happened. That the day that Jacob was being buried is the same day that, Yo, that, that, that uh, Asa was, was killed. So they both were buried on the same day. So she said something that ultimately happened many, many years later, that Yaakov and Asa were both buried on the same day. And as the Medru says, that Yaakov's, yeah, Asa's head is in the Marasana Pela. So his body's not buried there, but his head is buried in the, in the Marasana Pela. Rivka said to Yitzhak, I'm disgusted with my life because of the daughters of Tais. If Yaakov will take a wife and the daughter of Tais, like the girls of this place, then why do I need to live? I'm just, as she said, I'm disgusted by them. I need to, we, they need to, she needs to, he needs to get out of this place. He needs to go and find a shidduch out of hate, out of this country, this country. Yikar Yitzel Yaakov and Yitzel called Yaakov by Yevara Chesi blessed. Yetaveo when he commanded him by Yevalei loy sikach isha menespa. Do not take a woman from these people, from the daughters. Just like Avram Avinu didn't want Yitzel to marry from the daughters of Canaan, so to Yitzel didn't want his son Yaakov to marry from the daughters. Avram Avinu sent them to. And that's what Yitzhak did. The difference was over there, Yitzhak couldn't leave Eretz and Eliezer went to Kharan. But over here, Yitzhak sends Yaakov to Kharan. Get up, go to the Padnaram, go back to where I, where I got married, where I got found, found the bride. Suel, Avi, Mecha, go to the house of Suel, your mother's father. And go and get a daughter from the daughters of Lavan. Go and marry your cousin. Go and get the Lavan was, was uh, Rivka's uh, brother. Go and marry from the daughters of Lavan, Achi Mecha, the brother of you. Now she says, this base Besuel, live base Besuel, to the house of Besuel. Verse number three. It's the same blessing that Abraham gave and continues. El Shakai, and the Almighty God Yavarach, Isa will bless you. Yifrachavi and Becha, and you'll be fruitful and you'll multiply. Isa la Kal Amen, and you'll be an assembly of people. And as she says, May he who said enough, Shaddai, that's God's name, which means enough. And they'll always say that, Baruch Hashem, we have enough. Blessings for those who bless his mouth, bless you. And may he who given the blessing of Abraham to you and to your seed after you. To inherit the land of your sojourner. Which God has given to you. So this is a spiritual blessing. And really this is the blessing that God, that Abraham, that Isaac wanted to give. To Jacob, all times that he would continue the Jewish nation, not Esau, but ultimately he, him, and his seed will continue the blessings of Abraham, and they will be the future of Am Yisrael. That was the the blessing. That this is the spiritual blessing which Abraham gave Isaac, and now Isaac gives gives Jacob the blessing of the land of Yisrael, and the uh, the future of the Jewish nation will be. And all the blessings, he would be the continuation. The chain from Abraham would be Jacob. This is the blessing, the original blessing, 
the blessing that Abraham, that Isaac wanted to give Jacob always. And Birchaz Avram said to him, and I will make you a great nation, and all the nations of the world will bless themselves in your seed. May those above and mentioned blessings be to you. May that the nations and the blessed seed emanate from you. That's beautiful bracha. The nation of Am Yisrael all comes through from Yitzhak and Yaakov. That completes the Chumash for. We go now to the time of the day, which is the beginning of the fourth essay in Kuntas Achrin. In the as we come closer to the ending of the Tanya, very Kabbalistic part of the Tanya is the Kuntas Achrin. The Alter Rebbe explains the Kabbalistic thing, statements or teachings that he taught in the Tanya itself. <laughs> so let's let's read this introduction because. Will give us a background to the Kabbalistic and the teachings that he's going to say. He's going to teach. In the beginning, the Medjus teaches us God created the world and destroyed them. It says God created many worlds and destroyed them. Gabal explains that this refers to spiritual worlds. He didn't create physical worlds. First physical world he created is our world. What the Zohar says God created worlds means he created spiritual worlds. And uh, the supernal spirit it refers to the spiritual world, supernal spirit, this emanation that first exists in one state of being and then in another. Spirit in the former state of being is called Oilamas Toyu. That's the world of Kreas, that's many worlds. <laughs> Underwent the breaking of the vessels. And then the world of Tikkun was then built. So many worlds is, is, is symbolic to the world of Toyu, the world of chaos, where there were many breakages of many vessels. And that brought about, the Abish created many worlds that had too much light and no vessels, had many breakages of vessels, and then ultimately created the world of Tikkun. The sphere is comprised of Otis lights and Kalim vessels that contain these lights. A crisis in the world of Toyu, Toyu means the world of chaos, occurred because the Oedis, the lights, were too intense, so intense, that the Kalim, the vessels, were incapable of containing them. As a result of this a breakage, because the vessels broke, but the light was too big, was too strong, Sparks of holiness descended within Clippus. That's the whole why you have Clippus coverings hidden. Sparks of God have altered the concept of evil comes from the world of Toyu, Aesop. Aesop comes from the world of Toyu. These sparks are to be found in the world of Bria, Yitzir, and Asiya in general, but particularly within the physical physicality of our world. Is the task of a Jew to sift these material, to go through the material world, and by using it properly, by bringing out its spark. That's what Kabbalah says. We reveal the spark of Godness in this material world. This spark comes from a very high place. That's how it had the capability to come into a material thing. But it's hidden within it, and therefore we need to elevate it. So too, like our body. Our body is very mundane, but it comes from a very high place, our body, and has within it hidden godly sparks. And we need to take our body and elevate it and bring about, reveal its true reality, its true godly entity. That is Dida Batakhtin. That's in the short of the concept of the, of Birud, of the, the concept of Birudin which is the concept of sifting and, and rectification of the world. This elevation, I'm sorry, yeah, it is, it is a task of a Jewish system with tear by using properly in order to extract and refine these sparks, thereby elevating them to its original source in the world of Torah. This elevation in turn elicits a mighty downflow of divine energy from Torah and from even higher than that level. 
certain divine names whose respect to Kabbalistic meanings are significant by Hebrew letters, combination, are related to the process of birudim, this rectification, the extraction and refinement of the sparks of holiness. Thus, the name known as Ban, Bez Nun, Ban, is a source of the fallen holy sparks. The name Ma is the power that extracts and elevates them. While the name Sag, Sama Gimel, is the original source of the world of Toyo. So we have three names. <laughs> there are actually 72 names of God. These are the three names, combination of God's name. Two, 45, and 63. Those are different ways of God's combination. We know that God's name, Yudke Bafke, really does 26. In its pure sense, Yud, Hey, Vav, Hey is 26. But there are different ways to write God's name. And therefore, you can have Shem Ban, you can have God's name, Yudke Bafke, to accumulate 52. You can have it to accumulate 45. And you can also have it to 63. When the extraction and elevation of sparks deriving from the name Ban is accomplished through the name Ma. So when, 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 when Ban, when the sparks of wholeness is elevated through, through the shame Ban, through us doing, accomplishing the name of God in the way of 40, 45, a lofty degree of divine illumination is drawn down from the name of Stag. So that's the way it goes. Shame Ban comes into the world in a hidden way. Shame Ma elevates, the, it reveals the, this name, and that brings about that asusa delayed with the Lutata, that awakening from above, from below, brings about a flow of godliness from the name Sag. This is Kabbalistic. It's vested in, in the capacious vessels of the world of Tikkun. This extraction is what the most part accomplished through the performance action oriented mitzvahs involving physical objects which derive their life force flip lega, which in which the houses sparks of toy. Performing a mitzvah is which such subject cumbers the hidden sparks of their corporal husk and elevates. Seeking out of sparks, however. And also be accomplished through the study of Torah as well as through prayer. So we have three ways to do this: through Torah study, through davening, through actually doing a physical mitzvah. In the present essay, Altered will explain the statement of Pri Eitz Chaim in Kabbalah that nowadays this extraction is mainly affected through prayer. For prayer is uniquely able to draw down an infinite degree of godliness. Prayer alone can bring about change within the world, healing the sick and causing rain to fall. In order for such a degree of godliness to be called out, there must first be an arousal initiated from them. The expression of man's inner desire to be a recipient of divine benefit. Of these benefactions are to flow from the infinitely high source, the plea that requests them must be a surge from the corresponding deep source with one's own might for the infinite depths of the soul. So, in essence, that's why what the Rebbe is giving, telling us that's why ultimately we can change in our prayer. We do change in our prayer the physical world. So, somebody's sick, God forbid. We pray for them, and that changes their, through our prayer. If we have true meaning in our prayer, it will ultimately change the sick person to be healthy. The, the poor person to become wealthy. So we see the power of prayer. Even though prayer is not that much of an, is less than an action, a physical mitzvah, that's a physical action. Prayer also affects the physical world. And every Jew can pray. Even though the Torah also affects it, there are many great tzaddikim 
affected the world through the Torah. You have to be a tzaddik. But every Jew can pray. Because every Jew can pray with the depth of his heart. So the God is asking him, do b'chalavavcha with all your heart. So therefore, every Jew can pray. And every Jew can change the world. Same bracha. The Ebi should bring brachas to the world of Panasa. Fa'inu Hashem. We ask God for all these physical blessings we ask through our prayer. Okay. That's going to be the time. Ready? Oh, Mashkos Piyetz Chaim. Stand the statement of what wrote down in Piyetz Chaim. Man has a, in this contemporary time, in our time, our day, in our time of history, Ika Bida the Philadelphia. Primary, the sparks will tell you how we're going to elevate this world is through the act of it. As explained above, the task of sifting the material world and salvaging its hidden holy sparks is an ongoing mission of a Jew living as souls within bodies in this physical. So this is accomplished either through A, through the performance of an active, action-oriented mitzvah, which entails the use of a physical object whose life force derives from clippers nigger from a, from, a, from a clipper that shines like any physical thing that is kosher, that is usable. B, through the audible articulation of Torah study, subjects that deal with physical matters. C, through prayer, a form of spiritual service through which the divine soul influences and refines the animal soul whose life force derives from Clippus Nega to the point that it contain a love of God that his physical body can contain a love. So I say that in Piet's Chaim teaches us that this latter generation, extraction, elevation of sparks effectively primary through prayer. That's what the Zaya says, even though you have three ways to do it. Today, in our time, it's through prayer. After Tavotelamit Philly, even though we always say, that the learning of Torah is superior to prayer. Torah studies are given to me at three in the morning. Talmud Torah can not get cool on. The, 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 the learning of Torah is equivalent to all of them, even prayers, all mitzvahs. And high, even the concentration of prayers. So Torah study is the, is the number one thing to do. Why then? So why does the Zohar say that extraction of the, of the sparks of Torah are mainly accomplished in the present era through prayer? It's a contradiction. They get very Kabbalistic now. And you know, so to explain this, because through Taylor Mitzvahs, additional light is drawn forth into the world of emanation. Divine light is drawn forth into various worlds, either in accordance with Said Shadish, the principle of the root. The degree of revelation originally apportioned or accordance with Said Taisvist, principle of addition. Depending on the spiritual service of a mortal, that's where the light goes. This additional measure of revelation is much greater than the base, than the base location, and it comes from someplace higher, self -interest. So to tell you the myths I stated above, one draws down an additional measure of divine illumination in the world of Atsilas, in the world of emanation. This means the infinite light of God comes down when I learn Tayra, the infinite, I reveal Chachma of the Abish. Because I'm learning Chachma of the Abish, I'm the wisdom of God. So when I learn the wisdom of God, I'm revealing God's unlimited wuchachma. What's the Eisai Baruch? And I bring it down into the world of emanation. I reveal godliness in the world of emanation. I date Talmud Teda through my learning of Teda, but previous. I'm not saying that's I'm learning Teda. I'm learning Teda. I'm learning to correctly. I'm learning with an in, in, inner aspect. I'm trying to truly comprehend the essence of the Torah. This draws it down divine intellect. So since Torah study involves mortal intellect, its heavenly echoes calls forth a corresponding revelation of divine intellect, 
which is drawn inward aspect of the spheres in the world of Atzim. In my mitzvahs, through the mitzvah observance, is drawn down into the external aspects of the vessels. Which is the netzach hoidi yisayi that the ten spheres are za in the world of Atzilis. So we have, we, we, we heard these expressions before. We have pnimis hakelim and chatzenis hakelim. We have the inner aspects of the vessels of Atzilis, the world, even the world of emanation, and we have the external aspects. So, za is a confederation parts of continents, faces, which comprise a full complement of ten spheres. In the Netzachay Yisai, the lower four spheres, the lower spheres, which is outside the torso of za and thus comprise of its external aspect. So, you have Pesigavodah Tzifereis is the internal aspects of, of the emotions. That's a height, it's a, that's in, in a simple way. That's the givoda kindness of, in, 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 in givoda severity and beauty is the inner aspect of, of a concept. And then you have netzach, you say malchus is the outer expression of it. So, really, the outer expression of chesed is netzach. The outer expression of givoda is yehoid. Yisoid, I mean. That's a that's a good word, and that's a chayit. And the outer expression of tefedes is yisayit. So they have the inner aspect and the outer aspect in the, in the, in the, in the six manifestations, in the six emotions. So when a person learns Torah, he creates a ava and yira and tefedes in the world of atzilas. When, does, when a person does a mitzvah, he brings down a light in the outer Vessels, which is more the, the vessels of Netzach, victory, beauty, and foundation. So the infinite light, divine intellect, are drawn down by Taylor Mitzvahs and thus invested primarily in the, the world of Atzillus, in the world of emanation. Actually, and then later only closed himself. With the diminished intensity in the world of Bria, ultimately they come down to the world of Bria, the world of creation, and ultimately in the world of formation, and ultimately into the world of action. Teda mitzvahs gashmish be'elamazeh, through ultimately to the physical teda mitzvahs in this world. The divine intellect that is drawn down to the world of Atzilus is ultimately invested within the Torah in this world. On the divine light that's, born, that's drawn into externally in the vessel of Zah of Atzilis, is vested within the mitzvah of this world. The effect is thus strictly within the material aspect of the and mitzvahs of this world, but not within the materiality of the world itself. And that's why we see that we don't feel anything with the mitzvah. We do a mitzvah, we don't really feel. So too, when we learn Taylor, if we don't learn the very, we don't feel the godly revelation. Because by the time it comes down into this world, it's so far from its source that we actually don't feel the, the, the ruchni in the gashmi. The problem. So we put on tefillin, and by putting on tefillin, we're connected to God. We all know that. But why don't I feel the connection? Even though that the second I put on tefillin, the second I did the mitzvah, in the world there's a great revelation. In the world of Atzillus, it happens all in the world of Atzillus. <laughs> by the time this comes down, which it comes down within a second, but by the time it comes down, or the way it comes ultimately down into the world of the and then ultimately into the world of Yitzhida, and ultimately into the world of action, and then ultimately into my physical hand, it's very hidden, extremely hidden. So even though that's what happens, and that's why the mitzvah and learning Torah is, affects in the worlds above an extremely high level, but ultimately it doesn't affect me. <laughs> it doesn't ultimately, I don't feel the effect. I will feel love, but the opposite is davening. 
Prayer, however, calls forth the infinite light of God into Briya Yitzir and Asir directly. Not, that, not that, it, that, it, that my prayer brings down a light into the world of Yibri, into the world of Atsilas, and then it slowly comes down to the world, or whatever, not slowly, it diminishes itself in the world of Yitzir and diminishes. No, it comes down automatically. Because my prayer does affect things in this world. That's why I, that's my prayer. My prayer is that I believe God does heal people. If I ask God to heal people. If I know that God should heal people. God is the one who heals, who heals people. God is the one who makes people successful. God is the one who does everything in the world. And that's why I pray. So I pray to the Abish and the response is ASAP. So my prayer brings down a revelation of God straight into this world. Not only a revelation of God, but the way it ultimately affects. That, I, that when I pray to God and I trust that God is hearing my prayers, especially I pray with Tavana, when I pray that somebody should be healed, the Abish responds. God responds. Not only in a way by means of enclosement, as in case of Torah, the divine light is guarded in an entity which in turn is drawn down into this world. It's rather the actual light. The Abish comes down, is in sight, and modifies the state of created beings. That the person should get healthy. I pray God to reign. I don't want to have a spiritual rain. I don't want rain. I don't want the concept of rain in the world of Atsilas. I don't want the spiritual rain in the world. I want rain in this world. I want it to rain outside. So the 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 plant should grow and the tree should should have fruit. So I'm not praying for some spiritual revelation. I'm praying for a physical response. Blessed the years. Same bracha. To so change the effect with the actual world. So I, 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 I dive in, and, and I'm sure if I dive with intention, I'm sure that the Abish is going to heal the person. And the Abish will heal the person. I'm going to pray with intention that God should heal this person, and the Abish will heal him. That means my prayer brought down God into the world straight into the physical world and changed the physical world. It was not supposed to rain, and because we prayed, it rained. She'en ki the mitzvahs. The opposite of the mitzvahs. She'en shin ki that when I put on my tefillin, the, the tefillin doesn't transform itself. The tefillin didn't change. It stayed a bare tefillin. I, I did a mitzvah with this tefillin. This tefillin was a piece of, was a, was a leather box. I did a mitzvah. Why did the tefillin change? Why did the tefillin transform itself? It didn't transform itself. The tefillin say tefillin. And even though I did a mitzvah, I brought down a godly light because at the time it comes into the tefillin. It's, it's a, a minute uh, light that comes into the, this film. And it's not going to transform the physical film. It's beautiful. This is such a beautiful concept. Very deep, but very beautiful concept. In the aspect of prayer, we should realize what prayer, what means to daven, what means to pray, what is the accomplishment of davening? So notwithstanding drawing down divine light in the service of the mind and the heart and the God's mind, even the case of those mitzvahs that the fulfillment through making the object. Example, with the writing of the Torah scroll or making a sukkah, according to the opinion that actual construction of sukkah is a mitzvah. Unlike tefillin, where the mitzvahs are formed by wearing them, 
and not by making them. These myths are formed by modifying the revel and Nevertheless, Hashina Zelda, the changes with the object is affected by man. You're right. So I took a board and I put it together. I made a sukkah. So now the, 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 the board became a mitzvah. So I really changed the object. Before it was boards from the Home Depot. And now they became a mitzvah. They became a sukkah. And they changed their name. It's now called sukkah. Wow, that's unbelievable. You transform the physical boards into a sukkah. Yeah, but that's all done by me. Nothing God, I don't see God's change in the sukkah. It's still full of the walls. And the schach, I see this physical. I don't see God coming down here and transforming the sukkah because I put it together a sukkah into something different. I made it into the sukkah. Over here, God changes something. The person was sick. And we prayed, and he got healthy. So God came down and changed it. But maybe the Shemite could tell, not, like, not, not in, 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 by heaven, like in the case of prayer. So the, when an individual succeeds in bringing about a change of this will through prayer, meaning the sick person becomes well, this change is openly brought about from above. Not by the individual's prayers, but by, by, you, by God. God, it happened through my prayer, but the Abish that changed it. So I prayed, and God changed the person. And this is called forth from verifying power of the infant one blessed be, who is alone or capable. It is only God who can affect change. Such as in this world, uh, world bring about the cure or the productive rain. Sadia Davini, every day. You have the capability of life and death, health and sickness. Calling for the infinite light of God into the lower worlds is impossible without he actually I lost my nook from Matadaf. It's impossible without elevation of my nook from him again. My nook from mentioned many times. The lower waters, the feminine waters, the human waters, so to say, the human being eliciting, begging, asking, whereby the mortal recipient initiates and and to support your arousal from below through his spiritual service during prayer. We're begging the Abish. The whole concept of prayer is that I'm tuffel. I am secondary. I'm asking God. I realize that everything, every need, every situation in life is from God. So God. And that's the, that's the whole concept of prayer. The concept of prayer is that a person says that everything in my life, whether it's physical, whether it's spiritual, whether it's health, happiness, and love, and, 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 and success, money, everything comes from HaKadosh Baruch Hu. It's up to him to decide if I will have it or not. As Alta Rebbe will soon explain, since the initial, that this entails an infinite degree of service on the part of man, is able to draw down an infinite response from above, reciprocating each individual's particular arousal from below. Therefore, every day we dive in that God should give us health. And we, the, the, the more intense we have in our davening, in our prayer, the more there'll be a response from above. And the response is ASAP. Not the responses uh, that in a spiritual way. The responses in a physical way. That I'm going to have health, and I will have wealth, and I will have all my needs. I will be able to talk, and I'll be able to walk, and I'll be able to see it out, et cetera, et cetera. All the blessings that we say in davening, from the morning blessing through the prayer of the day. So davening prayer, push, it affects my day. 
transforms my day. It changes the way I'm going to have this day. That's what I have to feel. That's what I have to realize the power of prayer is that my prayers can change my day. Not just a prayer, I'm going to bring on something and who knows what. No, my prayer is going to change the day I'm going to have. Because it's up to my prayer, to the day that I'm going to have. Think of a tomato. This is not the case when it comes to the study of Torah. Shabbat Silas. <laughs> That is that, oh, that this is all happening in the world of Atsilis. It's all the, the revelation is not happening over here. It's happening in the world of every nation. Which in Atsilis, to begin with, revelations are happening there on a constant basis. So, so the revelations in the world of Atsilis, what is a, what, 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 so what? Unbelievable. But why do you change the world now? Since the study does not need to be drawn down below, there's no need for an arousal from below. As the Rebbe notes, the Alter Rebbe now goes on to explain how many consider my nukvin, how, may, how this may be considered my nukvin, and what, what its connection, what its connection is, is to the infinite life. I lost my nukvin, the elevation of my nukvin, the lower waters. In the mind and the heart of man, in the love of God, in a state of a a boundless flame of fire, the league vul. And being boundless, it's related to the infinite life. That's why davening should be I love the I, I love God, which is the void of Tvila. Which is the concept of my praise. I love him, Bechol Nafsu, my soul, with all my heart and with all my might. What's the might of a person? What is the meaning of the might of a human being, life? Which each individual capacity for infinitude through man is inherited, limited. And though, moreover, all of one man's might may be considered less than the ultimate of another man. Nevertheless, this limited degree of limitless of, is suffice because it's my might. I'm not asking, God's not asking you for the might of somebody else. God's not asking you for the ultimate. God's asking you for my ultimate might. And how limited it is. It's my ultimate might. And if I use my ultimate might in the service of God in my prayer, and that will waken up in sight. I use uh, my ultimate might, and the Abishter reveals his unlimited powers. But the arousal of below need not need but resemble the response from above that it seeks to elicit. If an arousal of low may truly consider infinite relative to the particular individual capacity, it suffices to draw down an infinite light from above. And, and this is the effect to the Gevuda, the attribute of severity, a divine name of Sag constitutes 288 sparks. Uh, Zoro says 288 sparks that came down to the world. So the love and longing of the Rossi, which man experiences during prayer, to a sense of ma'utcha with all his might, aroused by the Buddha of Saga, reaches up to the same, the Zoya said, reaches up to the name, it reaches up to the world of Tayu, higher than Atsilas. It reaches up to the world of Tayu, the Buddha of Sag, the divine name, which is the source of 288 sparks of Tayu. These sparks derive from the vessel of Tayu where the spirits originally are in a state of infinite longing to become holy one with God. This longing parallels the soul's love and the longing for God to the point of might. So in essence, do we, when we do might, we do more than we do we go beyond our might. 
We try to reach the level of infinitude within ourselves. To love the Abish to infinite and without any reservation. This awakens up. This awakens up and listens and awakens up the name of the same Sag Lamaila, which is Gavuda Lamaila, spared in a positive way. And it brings about a lot to And for this reason, prayer is called the life of the moment. Malchus Ayyadazir or is the aspect of Malchus the way it descends in Bria Yitzhidesi. As Ashi explains on a straightforward level in Pshat, Talmud calls prayer life of a moment, life of the hour. Why? Because people pray for health, peace, and livelihood, temporal things that are subject to limitation of passing moment. So it's called Chayesha. The life of the hour. Well, we pray for, for Panasa. Panasa day is not going to be tomorrow. I'm going to have to pray again. So it's a constantly, uh, I need food today. And tomorrow I'm going to have to pray food again. So it's always, <laughs> I'm praying for the moment, for the time. Here the Altadab speaks of how these matters exist in their source. In the supernal spirits in the world above. The spirits of Malchus is a source of time, right? We, we learned that already many times, that Malchus of the world of Atzil is the source of the world. So it's the source of everything. In Kabbalah, the world of Malchus in the world of emanation is the source of everything in the world. It's the Shechina, that's why Malchus, the world of Atzil has many names. And um, here the author of his source is, is Malchus, for the spirits of Malchus, sovereignty, that reflects the relationship of the instrument one to time. He reigns. He re 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 reign. He will reign. Hashem Melech. Hashem Molech. Hashem Yimlech. Right? So we say that, those expressions. God was the king. He is the king. He will be the king. That automatically shows where God comes within time. Was, is, and will. In the present, past, and future. This relationship in particular, evident as Malchus descends to animate the world of Bnei In the world of Atzilus, maybe time is not recognizable so much because everything there is unity. But as it comes down to the lower worlds, now time becomes more relevant. Now time becomes more revealed. Ultimately, comes into the world of action and comes into our world. Time is extremely relevant. And time is extremely important. And not only time is really important to push it to, to realize the importance of time in my life, but mitzvahs are dictated by time. Ultimately, the mitzvah itself, filling, is dictated by time. Can't put on fill at night. So I am dictated by time. The mitzvah is dictated by time. So, and because, so the relationship with particular evidence, Malchus descends in the world. And particularly because prayer draws down divine energy be it's in us here, through their source, the time related spirits of Malchus, prayer is called the life of the moment. So now you understand how prayer is connected to time. Because I'm praying for things that are in time. So when I, like for example, I'm asking for prayer for, for healing, I'm not saying that the person should be healed, you know, in a hundred years from now, because in essence, uh, I could be, you know, uh, uh, if I tell the Hades to yeah, the, the, the God's above time. No, I'm asking for a prayer that should be held today, right now. Uh, when I pray for food, I'm not praying that there should be food in Mitzvah Hashem in 10 years, but that there should be a food now. So prayer is a concept of Kaisha. It comes down into that I'm praying for things that are connected extremely to time. And that's why the Gemara calls it Kaisha. Because we are praying for temporal things that are limited to the passing of time. So the Gemara calls Phila Chayesha. The Gemara calls Taira Chayelam. The Taira Chayelam. <laughs> Taira is eternal life. So, right? <laughs> Taira 
the beauty of Taina is that actually that Azu, I, I can give you another section. Azu, Azu, uh, um, greatest of the other. Great is the person that comes to Ganadin and his Taina is in his hand, his learning is, is in his hand. Because when a person learns Taina, really the, the ultimate topic of Taina, you're going to see even Ganadin. So Taita is about now, but it's really about forever. It's not really about really per se only now. Not only Taita for now. I learned Taita for the sake of God, for the sake of eternity. That's Za. That's in, in, in that Za that's in us. The emotions of Za that's in us eternity. Mouthless is where everything comes into a practicality, where it comes into time. commandments of the Torah divide themselves into ten spheres of Zayr Akim. So for Zah, comprise spheres within the world of Atzilus. As stated in Torah, in the end of the Truma, Zah marks the conclusion of the infinite world. How it transcends the world of Bliyat Zilus. Okay, this is, as I said, Kabbalistic. I try to explain it to the best of my capabilities. And uh, as I've said many times, these things you need to read over a couple of times to um, even to comprehend or to decipher the meaning of it. But Dr. Abed just explained a beautiful concept in the power of davening and the power of prayer. Um, uh, this completes the, uh, the, the tiny of the day. Today is the first day of the month, which uh, the tillum of the day is from chapter one to chapter nine. And if you do those nine chapters, you will have done the chitas of the day. I wish you all a great day. I wish you all a good yante, a good chedesh. I wish you all a good Shabbos. And Misham, I hope that you all do the chitas by yourself tomorrow. And we'll see you all on Sunday morning at 8 o'clock when we will do continue at 8 a.m. the Chitas.